I really love hanging out with older adults, and this is how it started. Our second expert witness, Adina Zeki Al Hazuri, is a social epidemiologist, which means she studies how society affects our health. Who's the wisest old person you've ever met? Ah,、uh, that was my grandfather. He was a nurse, and、um, he's the one who started teaching me English. Thanks in part to her grandfather's efforts, Adina Zeki Al Hazuri eventually moved from Lebanon to the U.S. to study, and is now an assistant professor at the University of Miami. She studies how brains age. At first, she thought her work would all be about studying her favorite kind of people, the elderly. But recently, she's done a major piece of work looking at a group of relatively young people, three and a half thousand adults in the U.S. who were aged between 18 and 30 back in 1985, and who've been tracked ever since. For two decades, the subjects reported what income they had. We looked at the influence of having sustained exposure to low income on brain function. What Adina Zeki Al Hazuri and colleagues were trying to work out is whether being in poverty for a sustained period of time has a lasting effect on your brain. They also looked at people who said they felt poor, and all these people were asked to do three tests. Three cognitive tests that are widely used and they're considered very reliable to detect cognitive aging, meaning they're very sensitive to brain damage, to dementia, to age, etc. So while our last expert witness was looking at how poverty might use up your mental bandwidth, Adina Zeki Al Hazuri has been looking at whether it could actually damage your brain, and the results, she says, suggest it might. We found that individuals who were exposed all the time to poverty over those twenty years performed significantly worse than individuals who were never in poverty, and those who were in between tended to be affected in proportion to how long they'd lived in poverty. So, the more in poverty, the worse the performance was. Significantly so. The magnitude of the associations were sizable, and that tells us that there could be long-term consequences for the effects of poverty on the brain. Although the difficulty, she admits, is knowing which came first. If your brain doesn't work so well, you might become poorer rather than the other way round. To try to address that, the researchers then restricted the sample they were looking at to include only people who were in good health at the outset of the study and who were highly educated. We redid our analyses, and we found the association between poverty and cognitive function remained. The effect was slightly smaller. But still there, so the trend was apparent even among highly educated people who'd fallen on hard times. I would say that poverty definitely changes the way we think. Our expert witness says that cumulative exposure to low income can change the way you think. That poverty and even just feeling poor could lead, for some people, to premature aging of the brain. And as our next expert witness argues. It could also affect the way your brain develops in childhood. Part three: Arrested Development. It's heartbreaking, you know, to observe firsthand the impact of deprivation on a child is is truly heartbreaking. Katie McLaughlin, an associate professor of psychology at the University of Washington in the U.S., focuses her research on children in their early years because that's when the brain is developing the most. She's been studying children in orphanages in Romania. The institutions themselves, they do not look like places where children should be raised. You know, the walls are barren. There are few toys around, a few adults that will always stick with you. A Romanian orphanage is not exactly a typical environment. If children there don't do well, it could be for all sorts of reasons, not just that they live in a kind of poverty. But Katie McLaughlin believes her findings do translate. If we can understand how this extreme form of deprivation impacts the way the brain develops, we may be able to learn something about what's going on in the brains of children who are growing up in poverty. Her work in Romania has been part of a large study of children who've had their development tracked from a very young age. 
the experiment actually involved randomizing children who were growing up in these deprived orphanages, either to be removed from the orphanage and placed into a very high quality foster care that was designed and supported by the study, or to remain in the institution and essentially sort of a policy of non-interference to just let that child's life proceed as it would have if the study were not going on. The basic take-home from this experiment, she says, is that placing a child in a better environment can change the way their brain develops. We see that the children who were removed from the orphanage, especially if they were removed early in the first few years of life, demonstrate dramatic increases in IQ compared to children who remained in the orphanage for a longer period of time. Katie McLaughlin says brain scans of those who stayed in the orphanages longer revealed physical evidence of development problems. We see this thinning of the brain, early thinning, in many different areas. But especially in the areas which process complex language. In those regions, you see the result of something called synaptic pruning. The neural circuits and connections that are designed to process that input, when they're not being utilized, they get pruned away. And we think that when this happens continuously and on a large scale, it actually contributes to thinning in the cortex. She says this thinning of the outer gray matter of the brain, seen in children in Romanian orphanages, has also been found among children in poor areas in the U.S., So the idea here is there's an input from the environment that is absent or that is reduced in some way. Katie McLaughlin thinks the orphanage children's brains have been harmed from their not getting enough stimulation, that they've not been talked to or played with enough. And she thinks, to some degree, the same may be true for some poor children in the U.S. Children growing up in poverty often have less consistent and predictable interactions with adults, That might be because, for example, they have a single parent who has to work rotating shifts at a job in order to make ends meet. There could be genetics at play here. But Kate McLaughlin says at birth, the brains of children who are born to parents living in poverty look no different to those of children born to wealthier households. The differences emerge in the second year of life, she says. So some children growing up in poverty you think could grow into adults who then have a harder time finding their way through life, planning for the future, reacting to the world they've got to live in. Absolutely. How sure can Katie McLaughlin be that she's proved exactly how poverty might change the way you think? She admits that even the Romanian orphanage study, which she finds compelling, is not hard evidence of cause and effect. It's difficult to know, right? We can really only make guesses about what the most important ingredient is. If I were to put my money somewhere, I would put it on the absence of a caregiver um, because of... But you um, can't be sure. We can't be sure, 